So I recently got 2020.32.2 and we'll talk about Sirius XM, power wall coordination, the left open notifications and even the notification history a little bit. We'll save that to the end of the video because the super interesting stuff is a suspension improvement and this is for cars that have the adaptive air suspension. You can now specifically tune the suspension which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the suspension tab now. So you see a lot more information than you used to. Now you can, you have all those same settings, but you have an advanced as well, and you can actually adjust the suspension uh, for ride comfort and handling. And this is, this is super cool. And I'm gonna show some driving videos of it basically making changes on the fly. So first let me start the car here, and you'll be able to see that now the height options uh, are available. You can also see at the top, that the green and orange lines are starting to move. And this actually, if you rock the car a little bit, you can see the lines move. So they still have the auto raise based on location. In fact, you can even do keep, and that will keep the suspension high until you reach that speed, and then it'll drop to standard. If you do not select keep, it'll automatically go down to standard or your your other setting uh, once you leave the general area of that location. The other neat thing is that it actually tells you what your ground clearance is uh, in these different settings. If you change this, you can see the graphic on the car goes down and then the little weight thing will spin until the car uh, actually physically moves to uh, that desired location. All right, so let's look at some of the additional information so you do show suspension data and now you get a breakdown of all four corners the ride height as well as the compression rebound and the body acceleration so on auto it will automatically uh, adjust based on your driving habits your speed and things like that it'll change the compression and rebound in the front uh, well in all four corners of the car and it'll keep it comfortable on like the highway and if you're driving sporty it'll tighten up the suspension a little bit for you but you also have the options to do comfort but your values will start out different you can see now it's zero uh, for the compression and this gives you a really cushy ride uh, not bad actually it still um, handles quite well but it feels uh, much softer uh, than auto or especially sport so watch these numbers when I select sport you can see it automatically adjusts the uh, compression and rebound up now under advanced you'll be able to actually change the ride comfort and handling the handling I'm not sure exactly what this does this might tighten up the steering or something like that because it doesn't appear to change much from uh, compression rebound but if you change from soft to firm you can see it basically goes to sport settings so this seems to be somewhere between comfort setting and then all the way over here is uh, basically the sport setting is kind of what it seems like okay so let's get out on the road and uh, try a few of these things out First up, we'll try some speed bumps. I zoomed in on the center stack, so hopefully you'll be able to see the ride height change and the compression and rebound change. Now I'm on auto, and you can see that the compression and rebound is actively changing as I went over the speed bump, and even as I slow down and speed up, it's changing. You can also see the ride height change uh, as I go over the speed bump. On the standard suspension setting, the ride height will be basically zero. So plus or minus as you see me driving down the road and going over the speed bumps. When you raise the suspension higher, it's a positive number, and when you lower it, it's a negative number. So that's why you'll see a positive number and a negative number depending on how I'm hitting the bumps and driving. Next we'll try some launches. Here I'm in auto on low. As soon as I floor it, you can see the rebound goes to 100% to try to keep the nose down. Now we'll try it on low but in sport mode. You can see that the rebound goes back to 100%. It felt like it launched harder, but it was probably just the additional uh, compression dampening. Next, I'll try out some curvy roads here on sport and low. You'll see throughout this clip that the rebound and compression stays pretty high and fluctuates throughout the corners and as I change speed. Unfortunately, my GoPro had a little bit of trouble here staying centered on screen.
Here I'm going the other direction on the same road, but this time I'm on low and have it set to comfort mode. And you can really feel the difference when you're doing this. It feels very soft, though it still tracks really well. And you can see the compression and rebound uh, is much lower than it was when I was on sport mode. Next we'll do a little highway and first we'll try low and comfort setting and of course this gives you the uh, softest ride and you can see that the compression and rebound settings are pretty low. Again it does adapt as you drive. This doesn't prevent it from changing automatically but the numbers are much lower as you'll see when I change the settings. Okay, next I'll try out Sport, and you'll see right away, uh, at least in the front, it adds 20% to the compression and rebound. And last I'll switch it back to Auto, and once it's in Auto, you'll see the numbers change pretty drastically in both directions as it adapts more uh, fluidly to my driving. That's it for playing with the new suspension settings in the latest update and uh, let's switch back to talking about the rest of the updates. So the other updates with this version is uh, Sirius XM improvements. So they've updated the interface, made it uh, a lot easier to use. Uh, also, um, I received an email that they have uh, a trial for this now so uh, you can try it out for free for a little while. The Tesla power, power wall coordination, so this is nice if you have a power outage, uh, the car won't exceed the power wall's capability, so it doesn't drain your battery or overrun your power charging your car, so they actually coordinate now, which is pretty nice. Car left open notifications, this is very similar to teslafy.com, uh, where they have an option where if your car is unlocked or your windows are down for 15 minutes, it'll notify you via uh, an SMS message. This will do it via the Tesla app on your phone. If you go to the controls and then you go to vehicle, you'll see down here car left open notifications. You can have it off, doors, or doors and windows. So that's a great feature. I really like that. Uh, we talked about suspension improvements. Uh, for notification history, uh, if you saw an alert pop up and you need to uh, remember what that was, maybe you're uh, sending in a notification to Tesla for uh, getting the car serviced, you can now go to service and then notifications and then you can see the last notifications um, from, uh, from events that would pop up at the top of the screen. So you can see there uh, I just have suspension luckily. Uh, no major issues there. So that's it for 2020.32.2. Thanks for watching.